Hello, I'm the Happy Jawa, and welcome to something a little different today. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing the classic LEGO Star Wars TIE Fighters. This particular set I'm reviewing is from 2005, but they're all the exact same build, so I class it as like the 2001 version, really. At least that's what I'm going to put in the title, because it sounds even more vintage. Uh, but this is that particular set, because it comes with the light-up Darth Vader, and uh, classic uh, TIE pilot. But then I'm also lucky enough to have two more of the same tie, uh, because I also got back in the day the uh, classic TIE Fighter collection set that came with two ties, a uh, tie, uh, tie advance of Vader and then a weird like made up robot TIE Fighter. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad that I got all these sets back in the day. I actually had to rebuild these, like collect all the pieces individually from a parts list from my several Lego shoe boxes and bins. So uh, that was quite a lot of fun, digging around through parts to find each one individually. And then I just put them all back together. Which is why, unfortunately, I don't have the TIE Advance, the classic TIE Advance rebuilt. Because uh, I was able to build all these individually, because I could just use the individual parts list from this set. Uh, but with the TIE Advance, the parts list would be uh, merged with all the others as well. So it's kind of difficult to rebuild. Uh, but I, I hope to uh, complete it one day. Anyway, that's enough rambling, uh, let's get into the TIE Fighter. So keeping in mind that this design is from the very early days of LEGO Star Wars, I do think it actually holds up pretty well. Obviously, uh, these connector bits are a bit bulkier than they should be, and uh, just the cockpit design in general is very blocky, uh, but you do get this nice all-in-one molded piece, which is really cool. They used that quite a lot back in the day. And I kind of like the shaping, gonna end up to there. And the shaping of the wing itself also works out very nicely, I think. As you can see, this is the black and blue design of the TIE Fighters. And now they go with the slightly more accurate grey gray and uh, black. This was blue and black, and I actually really like the way these look. I think it's cool. I know a lot of people love uh, to collect the classic LEGO TIE Fighters just because they're so unique in the way they look. Uh, engine, very simplistic, you get this really nice printed piece at the top here, back when LEGO very rarely did stickers and were always printed. Uh, you got these Imperial logos on the sides, which took forever to find by the way, uh, but I got those. Um, this is all just represented with grills, all very basic, all very simple. Uh, the lasers on the end are red, which is accurate even though it never makes any sense because the lasers that come out of TIE Fighters are of course green, but the nib is always red for some reason. And how's this for parts accuracy? I still get the bright green jumper plate that goes under there. If we look at the actual interior of the cockpit, again, very simplistic. Can of course fit the TIE Fighter pilot in there. Eh. Like so. He has the basic control panel that's been used for years. And uh, he fits pretty snugly in there, and it's cool putting this down. Like so. And uh, now with the actual connectors you will notice that it's pretty pretty wobbly, pretty shaky. But at the same time these are not gonna snap off really, I don't think. And if they do, I don't know if this is an intentional play feature, but they're just connected with pins, so you could simulate one blowing up. Which is pretty cool. This is the part that holds it together. It's the same on both sides. I appreciate this shaping as well, like sealing that gap together, and so. I really sort of think that at the time they nailed it really. Like, you, you can immediately tell what it's supposed to be, of course the TIE Fighter is a very iconic shape anyway. Uh, the cockpit's probably a bit too big, uh, but other than that, uh, ignoring the Lego blockiness, I think it does work out really, really well. One of the two minifigures we get is a TIE Pilot, and uh, we get a standard Stormtrooper helmet, moulded in black, which is really, really cool in itself. Uh, as you can see, very minimalist printing, like no printing on the actual face part, just these Imperial emblems. So uh, they don't differentiate the visor in any way. Uh, but they weren't really into like fine printing on helmets back back in those days. Uh, nice printing on the torso though. Uh, no leg printing obviously, because again, it was very sparing back when this was made. And I don't know, it's very simplistic, but I, I do love the look of these guys. Uh, you can tell what it is again. As far as the help underneath the head goes, you just got a plain brown head. I don't know, it's kind of interesting, but it's a cool piece to have because uh, I think these are probably very rare, these plain brown heads. The second figure we have is Darth Vader, but not just any normal Darth Vader. Light up lightsaber Darth Vader, that's pretty cool. You light him up just by pressing the head in, 
Uh, the lightsaber hill itself is obviously not removable, just sort of this leathery, fleshy amalgamation at the end. <laughs> but the actual hill itself kind of looks cool, and that's just a basic stud attached to the bottom there. So that's quite interesting. Uh, there's no articulation in this wrist, which means he's sort of holding it at this funny angle. And there's this little out dent here so that you can't push it past the waist. I'm not, sh I'm not sure why that was done that way, but I don't know. Maybe if you spun the arm so far, it would rip a cable or something. That's probably why. Uh, this arm is removable, however, and has normal articulation. It's just a normal Lego arm, except this with this weird indent under the armpit. Which is kind of weird. don't know what that is. Uh, sl the legs are also not removable. You've got the basic classic Darth Vader printing on, which works just fine, I think. And uh, frilly cape, which cannot be removed or replaced because the head cannot be taken off either if we remove the helmet. The head is attached on because that's like the button to activate the light-up lightsaber. Uh, on the head printing itself, I really love that face. It's just classic Lego style, it sort of has a sense of humour about it. It looks like he's just woken up and is just super dazed and confused. I think it's great. Not the most intimidating Vader for sure. And you can see it, it almost looks like the face is just a sticker that's been wrapped on the head. Because there's this weird, like, thickness. So, I'm not really sure why that, why that is. This is just a separate kind of head element, I guess. Uh, to work in tandem with the with the weird tech they got inside. You can see there, right, the torso's got the panel there. That's kind of interesting. And we, of course, got the classic Lego Vader helmet, which I can't believe they were using for as long as they did, because it looks pretty dated nowadays. Uh, so it was about time that got an update uh, last year, I think it was. So yeah, really cool minifigure, and I'm glad I own it. <laughs> classic review, or vintage review, of uh, LEGO Star Wars sets. I thought it would make a nice change, and if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, also, let me know if this is your preferred tie design, or you prefer the most recent ones. I think the Force Awakens one really nailed uh, the tie look. Unfortunately, it's like ridiculously overpriced, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I'm happy to own these classic ones. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.